So when it comes to AA batteries, there's no shortage of marketing hype. And I've had a lot of people ask me to test AA batteries. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, I don't know about you, but I use AA batteries for a lot of different things, including even the microphone on the camera that I'm using right now. So I spend a lot of money on AA batteries, and I really wanna know if it's worth paying more for batteries or if I'm better off just buying a less expensive product. For example, you could buy $5 general store batteries for the price of one Energizer battery. So is Energizer that much better than the competition? Well, I don't know if they are or not, but we're about to find out. So let's get the testing underway. So before we actually begin testing batteries, there's a really neat trick that I learned about that actually does work, and it's the bounce test. Now, the purpose of this test is to determine whether or not a battery is new. It won't let you know whether or not the battery is totally used up, but it'll give you a pretty good idea as to where the battery is regarding the charge. The more it bounces, the less energy it has in it. Now, the way this works is if you take a battery that's brand new and you drop it on the end, it won't bounce very much, but if you take a used battery, in this case I have two batteries that are pretty much used up, there's a dark line on them, and if you drop them on the end, it'll bounce quite a bit. I won't get into all the science as to why this happens, there is a reason for it that's pretty interesting, but we're going to see how this works. The new Duracell's at 1.61, 1.62, the ones that are pretty much used up are at 1.22, 1.2. So these two are well used. We're gonna see how it does against the new one on the drop test. So in order to determine which battery is best, we need some technology that will measure how much energy is in each battery. And that's exactly what this battery charger that I purchased was able to do. I'm not endorsing this brand. I don't do any sort of sponsorship deals. Again, I purchased this with my own money. So how does this battery charger work? Well, it actually has a mode for discharging batteries. In other words, it is going to drain each battery of all of its energy and measure how much energy it pulled out of each battery while doing so and it has a couple of different discharge rates. So we're not gonna do just one battery, we're gonna do a couple of batteries and we're gonna also use a couple of different settings. So let's begin the testing by comparing Dollar General heavy duty batteries against the Duracells. I bought these for a dollar, these were rather expensive. So eight batteries for a dollar is 13 cents each. We'll see how they do compared to the Duracell. We're gonna set this up to discharge at 300 milliamps. So this is very interesting. Right now it's showing us what's happening on the first battery at eight minutes. It has less than one volt, 0.99. Battery two's at nine minutes. It has 0.95 volts. Battery three's at nine minutes, 1.34 volts. So far the Duracell is outperforming the Dollar General store significantly. Big difference there. Same thing with the fourth battery, 1.34 volts. So the Duracell batteries are doing very well. These Dollar General store batteries are about to die. So the Dollar General Store batteries did not do well at all, only lasting 26 minutes and producing 117 milliamp hours for the first battery, and 35 minutes and producing 158 for the second battery. Definitely not nearly as good as the Duracell, which lasted 381 minutes, producing 1,747 milliamp hours, and the second battery lasted 380 minutes, producing 1,738. To make this more interesting, I'm going to go ahead and try one battery each of a different brand for the next test. So we're about to really mix things up. Both the Rayovac Fusion as well as the Duracell Quantum both claim that no alkaline battery lasts longer. Obviously, they both can't be right, so let's see which one is better. We're also going to test the Amazon Basics as well as the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt. The Amazon Basics actually did fairly well considering the price of the battery. It produced 1,382 milliamp hours and lasted 301 minutes. Now the Duracell Quantum produced 1,850 milliamp hours and lasted 405 minutes. Unfortunately for the Duracell though, the Rayovac Fusion did last longer producing 1,884 milliamp hours and lasting 410 minutes. 
However, both finished nearly in a tie. Unfortunately, the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt didn't do too well, just like the Dollar General store. It only lasted 28 minutes and produced 125 milliamp hours. That's actually worse than the Dollar Store battery. So are lithium batteries really worth the extra cost? These lithiums are about $1.50 each, very expensive compared to a $0.55 cent EverReady or a $0.75 cent Energizer or around a $0.70 cent Rayovac. So is the Energizer better than Duracell? We're about to find out. First, the Rayovac lasted 347 minutes and produced 1,589 milliamps. The EverReady lasted 303 minutes and produced 1,384 milliamp hours. The Energizer actually beat the regular Duracell as well as the Duracell Quantum and all the other batteries we've tested up to this point as well, lasting 411 minutes and producing 1,888 milliamp hours, which is very impressive. However, not surprisingly, the Energizer Lithium beat all the batteries by a long shot lasting 723 minutes and creating 3,317 milliamp hours. So up next, we're going to slow down the battery drain interval to only 100 milliamp hours. So Harbor Freight Thunderbolt only lasted 181 minutes and produced 275 milliamp hours. The Dollar General didn't even do as good as the Harbor Freight. Unfortunately, it only lasted 128 minutes and produced 193 milliamp hours. The EverReady, on the other hand, lasted 837 minutes and produced 1,279 milliamp hours. The Rayovac lasted 1,205 minutes and made 1,844 milliamp hours. The Duracell Quantum lasted 1,363 minutes and made 2,064 milliamp hours. The Duracell lasted 1,315 minutes and made 2,012 milliamp hours. And the Energizer lasted 1,329 minutes and made 2,026 milliamp hours, which is in second place behind the Duracell Quantum. Up next, we're going to repeat the test on the Amazon Basics. I made a mistake on that test, and I'm also going to test the Energizer Lithium as well as the Rayovac. The Amazon Basics battery lasted 1,043 minutes, producing 1,593 milliamp hours. So as expected, the Energizer Lithium lasted twice as long as the competition for a total of 2,081 minutes and producing 3,152 milliamp hours. The Rayovac only lasted 958 minutes, producing 1,465 milliamp hours. Not even as good as the Amazon Basics. The 300 milliamp discharge rate is a fairly quick drain. The Energizer Lithium demonstrated that it is far better than any of the alkaline batteries we tested. I have to admit I'm really impressed with the Energizer beating the regular Duracell as well as the Duracell Quantum. While the Amazon Basics finished near the bottom of the competition, the price of the battery actually makes it the best value of the batteries we tested. The Amazon Basics produced over 32 milliamps of energy for one penny compared to the next closest competitor, the Energizer, which made nearly 26 milliamps for a penny. While the lithium was the best battery, it's definitely not the best value. Finally, the worst value included the Dollar General and the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt, both draining your wallet more than the competition. For the 100 milliamp discharge test, as expected, the Energizer Lithium's battery easily beat the alkaline batteries. The Duracell Quantum barely beat out the Energizer. The Amazon Basics did really well considering the price finishing ahead of the Rayovac as well as the EverReady Silver, both more expensive batteries. Just as before, the Dollar General and the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt didn't do so well. Once again, the Amazon Basics came out on top making 37 milliamps per penny and the Energizer held on to its second place position making nearly 28 milliamps per penny. Once again, the Dollar General and the Thunderbolt batteries finished in the last two positions demonstrating that they just aren't a good value. So which brand do you like the best and which ones do you normally buy? Did you enjoy the video? If you did, I'd really like to know your opinion on whether or not I should do a AAA battery showdown. Also, what about the rechargeable batteries? Do you use rechargeable batteries and would you like me to put together a showdown on those as well? Now, regarding my opinion on these batteries, I was really impressed with the Amazon Basics. I really didn't think it would do so well compared to the competition. I thought it would finish closer to the Harbor Freight or the Dollar General given the price of the battery is very affordable. So which battery would I buy? I would likely buy the Energizer just because it seems to be a good balance between price as well as producing a lot of energy. Now the Lithium Energizer is just a little too expensive in my opinion for the amount of energy it produces. In some applications I might buy the Lithium but definitely not for maybe a camera microphone or something else that doesn't really have a significant amount of battery drain. 
Now, I have to admit I was really disappointed with the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt as well as the Dollar General. They seem to be draining your wallet, not giving you a good product at all. So I don't recommend them as a battery unless you're just trying to buy something for a kid's toy that makes noise and you want that noise to stop quickly. That might be the only time I would buy a AA battery for those. Anyway, just want to say thanks so much for watching the video. I really look forward to reading your video ideas, so please give me some ideas for future videos. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.